Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. After two years of absence, we are super excited to do again our sixth anniversary with you. I know some of you guys come from very far. Uh, it's been very complicated with all the boundaries. So we really appreciate for you guys to make uh, all this way for, to come with us. So th thank you very much. I'm Matt Rosier. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Freevolt. My partner in crime, in life and in parenting, our COO and co-founder of Revolt, Ying Zhang. <laughs> My other partner in real crime and yes. great friend, <laughs> our CTO, co-founder of Revolt. So yes, six years. It's, uh, it started really from, uh, from nothing. And uh, but it's been like such a journey, like what a trip. And when I mean a trip, it's literally. It all started in 2015 on a very hot and humid uh, afternoon in Thailand when I had, uh, was always like dreaming of vintage motorcycle and was really interested in electric cargo bike. I was starting to think of those two options, working on my computer, got stung by a mosquito and went into like a delirium of super high fever for the next 10 days. During that time, everything got scrambled. The cargo bike with the vintage motorcycle, and it's, the idea came up, okay, let's make the vintage motorcycle electric. You? Yeah, at that time when uh, Matt was in Thailand, I was in Spain alone with a kid with a, a full-time job. And every morning when I wake up, I see, I saw like 10, 20 messages he gave me the instructions, please send a payment to this supplier, please send a payment to the other supplier. I was like, what's going on? And so I thought that was a middle age crisis. So <laughs> in order to save the marriage, it's okay, let's do that. But after a few days later, I saw our saving account getting lower and lower. So we had a few talks, uh, because the time jet lag, we had a few talks, then I started to believe in these projects. And I, I don't know what exactly it is, but I think it's got something very cool going to happen. So a few months later, the cruiser was born out of a prototype built by hand, a really beautiful post, one post on Instagram, and the phone started ringing. Some people I didn't hear from a very long time starting to reach, they said, what is this? It is so cool, like, I want one. So I said, okay, let's really make this as a business, but a cool design is not enough. We need a proper, proprietary tech. So for that time, I was uh, freelance, and I was every day checking in a website for freelance different project opportunities. And that's when I see one ad from Mr. Rousier, who was looking for somebody that can develop like connected smart filters for bicycles. So I applied with an indecent proposal that he cannot refuse. So a few mojitos and uh, handshakes. We had a great time. We totally match on, uh, on everything, and Revolt was born. We started in, uh, in our garage, actually in our living room. No, back to that time when um, Jaime on board, and uh, these two gentlemen, they started to build the prototype in my living room, which the whole apartment is only 90 square meter. And they started to build one, and then two, and then three, and then five. So one day say, look, um, let's, I know you guys are raising to look like a baby, Okay, so then I want, actually I want them to get, get out of my living room, I cannot say that. I say, look, I know that's our babies. So now let's make it official, let's make a lot of babies. That's why the Raymond family was born. So finally, in 2016, we incorporated the company and slowly we were bringing people with us to work together and finally we grew the company to what is now. So thanks to our wonderful team, which uh, you will see they're all wearing the team t-shirt. So make sure after you mingle with them and get the inside stories. We could never do it without our wonderful team.
So the cruiser is really the bike that started the revolution. Now we are on its uh, fourth version. So this is the cruiser V4 with a lot of updates compared to the V3 in the previous version. We switched the frame for aluminum, so we shaved a lot of weight out of it. The seats, the little problem we had was not adjustable, so we changed the geometry to be able to have an adjustable uh, seat. Uh, removable batteries, all the little uh, cons that people were discussing about, we put it on the bike as an added feature, and uh, that's how we created the V4. So every customer feedback put into that version. The main thing also on the tech, it's on the technology. We improved everything on the tech, but this I will come in a minute to show everything. So you can see how the cruiser is really like the flagship, so there's a lot of trimming, all those details, those copper medal. Make sure you get a close look because everywhere you look, there's something in edits. So the Torino V2 have all the updates we discussed on the Cruiser V4. But on the Torino, it was even more necessary because the bike is a very sport bike. When we designed the Torino, we, want, we only had the Cruiser and we, uh, like the motorcycle lovers, always enjoyed it. But when we were talking to a cyclist, they were always thrown down by the, the, like the not upright position. So we decided to like shrink it, make it a raised up, keep the nice curve, and that's where the Torino was born. But made of steel, the bike was a little bit stiff, so now it's in aluminum, it's a lot uh, better frame, a lot lighter. We also have the removable uh, batteries, also an optional uh, fork, suspension fork, which makes the ride incredibly comfortable. And of course, the AVA 2.0 technology. Same as the Cruiser, it's exactly the same finishing. All the medals on the fork, little copper, the trimming, the stitches. Have a close look at it because it's, a, it's an art on wheel. So the Ringo is the new model in the Raybot line. This is actually like the bike I'm the most excited about in Raybot line. It's, it's just so incredibly maneuverable. Make sure everybody get a try at it because it's the, the seat is ultra comfortable. The 20 inch wheel by four make it uh, really great and super, it's good for everywhere. Like we take it on the beach, we take it on the urban road, on the gravel. It's a bike for everywhere. You can put two people on the seats. It's really like it's so versatile that we call it our street cowboy. Same as the cruiser and everything, it's a high-end bike with all the trimmings, everything. Make sure you get a close look at it because it's a, it's a fantastic ride.
So the Clubman was the first try at getting like a, a mid-range, which is more affordable than the, the higher end, like the Cruisers and the, and the Torino. So we went a little bit uh, lower on spec, having less leather trim, but make a bike that is exceptional, that have an incredible design, looks kind of like a Cruiser, but with uh, more, something more simple, something that you're less afraid of, uh, of using every day. So it have a, a removable batteries, uh, to go down on price, also we had to go uh, change for another technology. We use a Bafang system, which is a fantastic motor, but just don't have the connectivity. But for this price range, we start at 2200, so we really aim to have like the best mid-range mid bike in the market. Same, so you will see the same trimming, it's the same front end as the Cruiser, so it's a lot of uh, detailing and a lot of uh, beauty bring in a, in a mid-class, in a mid-range uh, mid bicycle. This magic moment So different and so new Was like any other Until I met you And then it happened So the Beachin was a tech to take exactly like the same concept of the Clubman but make really an outdoor and ultra fun bicycle. So we use the same technology, the same like a frame base, but put those like really fat tires and make it like with a, a really high and swept handlebar. So it's, it's like the Cadillac of bicycle. Like anybody make sure to try it. It's by far like the, the most comfortable bike we ever had. So it looks huge, but it's actually very agile. It's, a, it's great for the city, great for gravel, for the beach. It's a, it's a bike we can use everywhere. And with the same battery system as the, um, as the Clubman, it's something very easy to, to remove and just carry and charge at work. So same, we always have the, those copper trim and we try to always keep the line. So even in our price point bike, we bring as much beauty as we can. So talking about detailings, the Ambassador is the bike where we decide to make like no concession. We wanted like by the most detailed and most uh, like a beautiful bike ever made. So it, we went for super high-end frame. They're all uh, Columbus uh, steel made with the raccord. Everything is dipped in, uh, in copper. The, um, even the hub, the rims, everything is like a matching copper. So we have it, we made like a silver version with uh, the royal blue paint. We have also the gold and the burgundy. And we made also like a copper and British green. So the, the ambassador is really like everything about detailing. It's a bike that was used several times for like a high-end watch advertising. We had some uh, stuff with Rolex, with Rabat, like they, they're always, it's like, a, it's like a luxury watch of bicycle. So the Trixie, it's, it's funny, it's actually the first bike that came in my mind when I was uh, like daydreaming with my vintage motorcycle. I was actually wanted to design a cargo bike. I tried one the first time, I saw one in 2015, and when I saw it, I was like, this is amazing, that's what we need to do. But all I saw, they were kind of like a very square and the design was not that beautiful. And uh, it was a mechanic, so it was super hard to pedal. But so it's, that's why we, that is the first project we did. It took a long time because it's a lot of uh, design. We have some, uh, all the leather interior, the seat belts. We have the Maxi Cozy adapter. We also have like a, 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 uh, like a Chester interior, like a out, uh, aftermarket. We designed like in our office, the same Chesterfield uh, leather interior you can buy it for the Trixie. So it's all about uh, just everywhere, like it's a real revolt uh, cargo bike. Uh, ultra stable, we tried every cargo bike uh, in the market. So I tried a two wheel one, which personally I was quite comfortable with it. But when I asked uh, my wife if she was willing to take the kids at school with it, 
it was like a no-go. There was no way she wanted to balance with the kids. Then I tried the one where you switch the, the, whole, like, uh, the whole cargo, and uh, I found it just horrible in the curve to have to like, switch your body. The center of gravity is switching, and you, you feel like you're in actu you can actually capsize if you, if you turn too quick. So we decided to go with a fixed cargo and some uh, cardan and have just like the, the wheel turning. We also like opted to have like a canting, but we tried some, it was too technical. This is like the, by far the easiest cargo bike to ride. The batteries, since it's a big thing, you cannot uh, take it home. We just have it in a, in a little suitcase. So you, have, you can have like a 21 ampere batteries inside. You just unclip it, we have a little uh, sling, and you just wear the, the battery. It's actually similar to the Ambassador, where we made a beautiful leather case that you can wear. It's actually the first battery like ready to wear, like prêt à porter. So I mentioned earlier that we, we did a lot of work during the lockdown on the technology. That was the time to stop everything and rethink and redesign to make it like the next generation bike. So we really did the, the two motors, the Smart Hub and Power Hub are uh, totally different. They've been rebuilt to be more efficient. And we added also the Micro Hub for the folding uh, bicycle. So it's a, it's a geared, the old direct drive hub, but the geared hub is a geared that fixed clutch so we can have the regen braking. So this is a, like a radiography of the, the motor. You can see all the magnets are curved actually. That create a perfectly circular uh, magnetic field so we can uh, increase the efficiency. So it's, that's why the, when you ride the Revolt compared to the other one, you will feel like the motorization is so smooth. It's, uh, it's all about the, the winding and the, the way the motor is built and mixed with the controller. So now the main thing that was uh, something we did at the start, we didn't want a technology that is like, a, like printed in the controller because then the bike can get obsolete very quickly. So we did everything with open parameters and all the technology is based on the app. So you just update the app, just update a new firmware and your bike is, will be always like the latest generation. So we had in AVA 1.0, we already have some really cool features uh, so you can like uh, change the, the speed, the, the acceleration, like a lot of stuff, but they were all like you had to print them, like to flash them into the controller. On the 2.0, what we added is uh, like a RAM, so we can have like a, a memory, like you can instantly write to the controller and communicate with it. That allowed us to make a lot of uh, AI features that I will discuss in a moment. So the main thing you will see in a one point, we had only like one bike, then I added another bikes, and all the features are totally different from bikes to bikes. So to make it less confusing, now you, when you connect the AVA to a bicycle, it will automatically detect which bike you're riding, so it will only offer the parameters that are available for this bike. So if you have an excess, you have no chance to put it like 1,000 watt for a power hub. And also with geofence, like, like with the GPS location, to see exactly where the bike is, so we only offer the parameters that are legal in that country. The regenerative braking, so it's a technology that is not new, they use on every uh, like electric cars now, but on e-bike, there is like actually very, very few brands that have regen braking. Us, we had it since uh, 2016 on the first bike, but it was more like a, a more sta uh, fixed uh, region braking. Now we did a lot of technology to actually like uh, do the, the ramp, so it's much smoother and we can increase as we, as we brake. But the best way to actually control the region braking, it's a new patent feature, which is the back pedal region braking. Because you will see normally when you use a mechanical brake, according to the pressure you put on the lever, you can decide the amount of braking you want. When it's a region braking, it's a binary command. So it's either on, either off. So when you're on the flat and you put it too strong, sometimes you just want to slow down and the bike will just like almost uh, stall. So it's uh, quite uncomfortable. So if you lower it, then you're downhill, it will do nothing. So you want more region. So how can we control it uh, without uh, just on a binary function? We used the cadence sensor of the pedal assist. So we channel pedal assist to have like a, a wave signal that gives us exactly the RPM and the negative RPM. So when we cycle backwards, it will trigger the regenerative braking. The slower we pedal, the bike will slow down. We back pedal quickly, the bike will stop quickly, and all that energy that we recover is actually going back into the battery. So braking is charging a battery. You don't have to consume brake pads, you just cycle backwards. 
when you get used to it, it's just amazing. We don't even touch the levers anymore. We are just cycling forward, slowing down. So this patent technology, like, make sure you try it on the Ringo, Cruiser, and uh, Torino. It's, uh, and the XS as well have this. You just almost never use the brake anymore. We also have a feature which is the auto pass. We use the gyroscope of the phone to detect if there's a hill, so it automatically increases the, the power on the, on the pedal assist. A great feature in EVA 2.0 is the lock wheel. So it's not a thing to lock your bike for a long time, but you go to the coffee shop, you're sitting on a terrace, you don't want anybody to run away with your bike, you just grab the app, press a button, it will automatically lock the wheel. Even if somebody turn off the bike, turn on, it will be on lock wheel by default. So even if your bike gets stolen, it's unusable. So it's much more easy to track it after with the GPS. An amazing feature on the AVA 2.0 is actually the diagnostic and all the information that is on the app. It's a thing we were really missing before and we realized that pretty much 90% of the call we got of technical support, they were like setting issues. People like missetting the bike. So already have the settings uh, by bicycle that helped a lot. But now even if there's anything, instead of uh, playing on normal e-bike, like trying to change the throttles and pedal assist and everything, we have a command in the app where we can see all the sensors, all the voltage, the way they are working, so we can exactly detect what is uh, wrong with the bike. So if you have a remote technical support, it just made it uh, infinitely easier. And also all the information, every command in the advanced settings, you want to know what it is, there's an explanation video with a graphic showing you like if you touch this, you will affect this in the bike. We recommend uh, this thing, so everything is carefully explained. And by this, we remove like 90% of the technical support call. So as you see, there is like so much technology in our bike. So smarter city bike is something we never hear about, uh, about us. Everybody's writing about Revolt because of the design, because of the beauty, the details. But we felt always, uh, we always thought like the technology was in the shadow of the design. So we made so much work creating all that stuff that we, we had to do something about it. How can we make the technology stand out? And that's where we decided, okay, let's make a bike that really breezes the technology. And that's how we created Excite, our new brand. So now it's not a porn website, even if I wear the X extremely well, but it's, uh, it's our new brand about uh, just for the technophile. Revolt is the brand for the, like the, it's a sole brand, like vintage. Excite is the brand that will breathe technology. All the tech will be on those bikes. So everything started with very light, late night and a stunning email. Entitled, fucking great idea. <laughs> so I said, whoa, okay, let's have a look. And I see Matt send me some kind of uh, sketches shaping the future with several proposals of bikes. And at that time I feel like, uh, okay, another storm is coming. Same storm of 2016 is coming again. So I'm guilty of charts. I say, I love that bike. But in the end, indeed, it was a fucking bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so if you say it, it all came like from a glimpse, like a, but Revol was created almost of a glimpse of insanity, if we can say. But I don't see how, how else we could have done it. It's a, it had to be insanity. And this was also like a jet light night. I think I was on an airplane sketching, thinking about uh, like how can we outline the technology on a bike. And that was the bike we say, it was supposed to be easy project. You see, I drive, we use a Clubman uh, tube, then the Ozone, like some stuff we can, but we start to go into it, and the idea was to buy, make a bike without any concession.
So yes, X1 is coming, and it's like not a season from Game of Thrones that can last uh, many years. I know it did. The X1 is actually our greatest pride and our greatest shame as well, if I have to say, for the time it took to, to develop. I would like to explain a little bit what took so long. It's a bike when I designed it, was uh, an idea. Always when I design something, I'm thinking how to build it. It's uh, one of the first criteria. But when we made this bike, the idea was to just remove like how we can do it. Let's just like, imagine what we must do and no concession and we will figure out. It was a bit harder to, to execute than, uh, than writing an email, fucking great idea to, to Jaime, but, <laughs> but the man is a genius. So what can I say? Like all those uh, features with the facial recognition, the back pedal, uh, pedaling, all the stuff we imagined at that time, they came to reality. And if you think of it, it's not that long. It took two years to create all that tech. And that tech, that wonderful tech that is now on all the rival bike and on all the range. So it was useful to create this. And um, also in the process, the, I mean, you, you all know like the two years we've been having are very difficult. We start to design something, then one part got discontinued or the supplier got bankrupt. So we have to redesign a new part to replace it. Then it doesn't match with the tube, so we have to redo the mold. And it was a loophole like this for two years of uh, like we had to redesign it like two or three times the, the whole stuff. But now finally it's here. This bike is not a prototype. It's been taken early from uh, production, but we have like a 1,000 more bike that's coming that will come uh, just by container shipping. So the main thing on this bike is that we have a, a beautiful Eva that you always have to have on your phone and uh, put on the, on the display. We say, why can't we integrate it into the, the bike? Like I love when I walk into like an electric car, a modern electric car, that, that big display is always what's seducing me. with a great interface. So that's why we decided, okay, let's make like an inboard computer. So you can buy the Eva like as a standalone to put on it, which is like perfectly matched. But we're making the cover to match with like all the modern uh, iPhone is something quite flexible. And then you have all the Eva technology like built in, especially for the gyroscope thing. You have to always calibrate. So here it's always setting up in the bike and it's been designed for it. You saw all the features we have uh, when you like shade the, the light sensor the lights will turn on. You have a turn signal that are activated also with kinetic, just by a, a blink and moving the head. So much technology that's been brought into the bike and something that has never been done before. And to be pioneer in something is not easy. I, I wish, like Jaime is right, it was a fucking bad idea, but it's a great product and we are super happy. <laughs> so then, having all that technology and design that new brand, we cannot stop with one bike. So that's why we had a, a long time during COVID to create of a, a range of products. And something that was really important, we saw there was a lot of attention in those like uh, electric fixes, something really minimalist. So we brought all the technology into the, of the X1, built into a super slick and a minimalist uh, city bike. So this one is the, the, the next step, which is a step through bike. We also have the high bar one, the next uh, normal, with the, the bar is, is about this height. We had, it, uh, we had to send it to a sample for, for like a, a good deal that we, we cannot disclose right now, but it's for the good of Revolt and Excite. Voilà. <laughs> so you will see all the cable routing go through the handlebar, goes inside the stem, and inside the head tube, they have a dual chamber. That's why you don't see any cable anywhere. It's got a belt drive, it's like everything is so minimalist. You look at the, the handlebar, there is nothing sticking out. The tube is the same uh, width of the, the grips. Everything is like super, super slick. And similar to, uh, to X1, the main thing is the mini Ava. Right now, we just put uh, the, the black screen to have a GPS inside, but you can see after, uh, later on the, on the little kick scooter, we have the display uh, on demo. It's a, I mean, it's a jewel of technology. It's a 2.8 inch uh, touchscreen, which is actually with a full Android system. So we can put a SIM card, the thing is fully connected, and we have a, a button we can install, uh, like Waze, Google Map, whatever you want, it's a full Android system, so you're free to install any app you want. And it's got pre-installed the Ava 2.0 uh, settings. So you will have all the, the navigation, your settings, everything on the touch of your handlebar. If people don't want uh, like a screen and want less like a let's gimmick, for example, you can just have the black window and we put a GPS inside, which is uh, unseen. Also, we don't see the battery anywhere. We decide not to put it in a tube, 
If you make today, we want something easily extractable. And when we park a bike like this on the streets, I don't know every city, but in Barcelona, we remove the batteries and we remove the saddles, which is the first thing people are stealing. So even though we put a lock, you have a key to remove the, the seat tubes, it is actually your batteries. So if you want to go home, you leave the bike, you just unplug the battery and take it with you. All the cells are inside uh, that tube, which is the best location because it's exactly under your center of gravity. So the, the bike is perfectly balanced. So having an amazing seat tubes with the batteries, it was the perfect accessory to make a folding bike. We've been asked to make folding bike for since the beginning of Revolt. But as Revolt, we didn't know how to make something that really stands out and differentiates. So that's why we, we kind of like uh, pushed it away on the side. With Excite, it made perfect sense, especially now with all the new technology that we made for, for the X1. It's actually a tiny bike, but don't get fooled. It's got all the technology of the X1. So all the facial recognition, the app, the lock wheel, everything is onto that little bike. So the, the headlights, everything is built in. If you look at the finishing, it's, a, it's a totally like a mini X1 folding, all the details also. Get a close look because for a folding bike, it's the best of its kind. The XS and every other bike in our range with the AVA 2.0 accessories can be converted into a home trainer. Basically, since we have the regen braking, we can use that regen braking to create the resistance. We've been asked by many people to make a training bike, a smart trainer. Actually, I think Fabio over here, I saw him earlier, was the first one to say, make a beautiful home trainer. So I started to look into it and say, okay, like it's gonna be beautiful, but we need technology. So I checked all the specs of the highest, like a 3,000 euro, like the best uh, uh, smart trainers you can find in the market. I look at the sensors, what they had, okay, cadence, something for the resistance, it's actually electromagnetic, so same as the Regen. It's got like torque sensor, all the stuff, all those sensors, all those data, we have it on our controller. So I say, okay, let's make something that is like fully universal. We can just reverse the motor to lock it into Regen braking and it's creating a, a, uh, like, a, like a dynamo almost, you're creating resistance, and the more you increase your resistance, the more you're charging the battery. So you don't want to go to, you want to go to work, you don't want to always sweaty, you just take your bike, take the energy, drain the battery, you come back home, you want to stay fitness, you just give the energy back to your battery with a great uh, region fit session. Somebody wants to try it? Astrid? Yes? <laughs> I used to, uh, I used to try it. Okay. So we will start with a very low resistance. You can start cycling. See, easy. So here, there's no resistance at all, so it's zero amp. I think you can do Not so hard, better. No? Not so hard because there's no yeah. resistance. Let's go. You can in real time increase 
the resistance. But see you go, now it's 3.3 .3 amperes. It's exactly the speed of our home charger. So you charge as fast as plugging into the wall with zero, zero consumption. You're actually creating energy, mechanical energy. I think it's, it's something beautiful. And same as those stacks, like those super high-end uh, home trainer, you have the interface. I see her speed, her cadence, the watt she's generating, the battery. They don't have this because as we can see our battery states and we can see how it's ramping up. Astrid now is charging. She could even power the building right now. You can walk in the, you can, uh, walk in the same time. You can give your call. Mm. And I think I will reduce a little bit. Now is it? <laughs> and you see the calorie you're burning, uh, 16 kilocalories, by the way. Uh, the amperage, the watt hour, so it's, it's just an amazing picture that gives no compromise. It's a bag you use every day. It doesn't have a, it's not like an hybrid thing that have to compromise something. It's a great bike and it becomes a super high-end smart trainer. So it's a, tech, it's a patented technology and the patent doesn't stop here. The patent, we actually have it, we're developing now like a, a little device we can plug in that can connect to the third party Exactly, to the third party uh, software like Zwift or Ruby. So you will be able to tune in and do races, virtual races, around, with people around the world using like a smart trainer or a region fit. And on the software, if there's a hill, automatically, Astrid will have a harder time to cycle. In the software that is like a flat, up, all of a sudden it's easy. All this, it's, it's, it's just like a super ludic way to, to get fit and charging your battery. We also have like all made uh, setup, so you can have like interval training, endurance, everything is built in into the free AVA 2.0 app. All the bike on the range have this. <laughs> Merci. 24 kilocalories. Super. Super. <laughs> Look, I was so excited and I lose my clipper now. So we create energy. Wow, what a fantastic thing. But what can we do with energy? Just ride our bike? Can we go further? What if you go camping and you take just your excess and you want to charge your laptop, run something, you're fancy, you want a microwave in your camp trip? The box. The box is a device that we plug in parallel between the battery and the controller. So you will do your region fit, it will charge your battery, but in the same time, it will convert to 220 volts so you can use your battery to power your, uh, all your outlets. So you have 220 and 110 for the US, we have two versions. So you can power anything in 220 volt from the batteries. You don't need to use, uh, do bridge and fit while you're using a 220. It will just drown for the battery. The battery gets low because you use all your appliances. You can just go back and bridge and fit your way to power back the, the things. So even for a young couple, you could even consider powering your house. Can you power your house with bridge and fit, Graham? <laughs> Jaime did, look at him, so Jaime 2.0 is uh, as fit as a <laughs> So the Coolex, same, we, we need to keep going with that range. We wanted something, like as a kid I grew up with like those uh, Peugeot, 103, SP, moped. I wanted an e-bike that is just like a moped, that doesn't feel like a bike, that you feel super safe on it. So it's a pedelec bike with torque sensor, belt drive, but it feels so sturdy. You go on it, you've got the same tires of the, the cruiser, so it's, it's, uh, it almost feels like a motorcycle when you ride it. So you don't have to be afraid of the curve, anything. It's, it's a super safe e-bike, which is almost like a moped. We have also the, um, the super wing, we call it, which is this aftermarket mud guard that we put on the rear with like, uh, some little wings, which even enhance the moped effect. In that uh, mud guard, we can actually hide an inner lock that will coil inside, so you, can, you have a built-in lock that you can, you can just uh, like use on the street. Same as a, it's an excite product, so we don't like wires. All the wires are going into the handlebar inside. This is an early prototype. We're having the new one coming soon. It will be the same head tube as the next. So everything will be rerouted inside the frame. You don't see nothing. So it's not only for beauty, but this is a bike that is actually a work bike. We have a lot of demand for, like, so for sharing industries, for like a delivery. So as a work bike, it's something you want to be, uh, live on the street and be vandal proof. So all the wires, everything is hidden. And with the super wing, you can't even access to the, the bolt, to nothing. 
the battery is extractable from the bottom, but we also have a version from the top if it's really a work and you want something more easy to use. So now we, also a lot of people have been asking us to make like a kick scooter. It's something like I never wanted to because I, I just hate them. I just hate them on the sidewalks everywhere and they're so like crappy and breaks. I, I see them like the workshop full of little kick scooters that are non-working. So that's something that was a no-go. But then we were designing at the same time a Vespa. We wanted to have like a moped, like a little electric Vespa. And then I see all those new regulations in the city. Like in Paris, you have to go 30 kilometers an hour max with a Vespa. So it's only five kilometers more than a, than a bicycle. Uh, you need a license plate, you need a helmet. There's so much uh, registration with the, with the scooter. So the kick scooter have like such a freedom, but it's a shitty vehicle. So I said, why not make something hybrid? It's a Vespa, like you're fully isolated. You have everything, you can wear a suit, it's super elegant, like a Vespa, you're standing up, but it's got like bicycle components, 16 inch wheel, this brake, it's not like the little tiny thing that, uh, that are dangerous. This is a super safe vehicle. So when we compare it, the price is gonna be more like the price of an e-bike. We're talking about uh, 2200 for likes. But, so it's expensive compared to a kick scooter, but it's not a kick scooter. It's actually a stand-up Vespa that uses the, the legality of the kick scooter. And you can also plan, we have a nice strong uh, rear rack. You can put a top case that is just high enough, so maybe with your first tire, you can rest your, your butt onto it. And that becomes a real Vespa. So same as the, um, the next, you have the, the slick handlebar with the LED built-in. And here on this one, it's very hard to show it now, but you have the, the mini Ava that I'm talking about. It's a full Android. It's got all the app installed and the Ava 2.0 app. So from your dashboard, you have two little buttons to navigate and it's touchscreen. It's the most sophisticated device we have. But in, uh, in Excite, all we are missing is something I said in Revolt, I was the most excited about the Ringo. The Ringo, like the format, the thing, I said, it's just an amazing bike. I just want to make something as a moped. No longer as a, as a pedelec, but a real moped, dual suspension, the power hub uh, at a 2,000 watt, and make like a 60 volt moped from Excite. So it needs to look like something like retro, but like a, st like a spacecraft. So this is the Bulex. We designed, it's, a, it's actually a very simple construction made of a, a tube, extruded tubes, the little winglets. It looks like a starship on wheel, pretty much. And it's got so many accessories. We designed like a surfboard carrier, like a little central suitcase, some uh, like a front rack, rear rack. You can have like two uh, baby seats on it. There's like all kind of accessories that you can put on this bike. It will be like the most versatile moped uh, that you can have with a huge range. We're talking about 60 volts, 45 ampere. You can look at the Bulex like a, like a torchlight with all the batteries inside and the wheels. You're just sitting on a torchlight. So the whole tube is full of battery. But it needs to be easy to charge, take from home. So you see the beautiful profile design. From the back, you pull the handle, extract your batteries. It's on wheel. You just roll it back to your office or home to charge it. So actually, when I say, I love to make Excite bikes, let's make one more X bikes. My wife said, no way. One more X bikes and you get an ex-wife. But she loved it so much, she said, allez, go ahead, go boy. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> so, yeah, the new generation, so the Excite, it's really like why now it's, we don't want Excite to be in the shadow of Revolt. It's got to be a brand on its own. So we want Excite to be a sister brand of Revolt. It's so cool if we leave it like a, we call a Revolt bike and we have a line that is Excite, it will always be a line and people will always see us for Revolt. We do not want this. We need a bike, a brand that can blossom on its own and it's by being independent. So the company can no longer be called Revolt. We have to change our company identity, our corporate identity. So we need to find a cool name. So when you find a cool name, you are saying, what are your, your core values? 
So we know the core values of Revolt, it's very clear. We know the core values of Excite, which is a great line as well, it's very clear. But what do we stand for? Like, I don't know what we stand for, but I know what we don't stand for. The dark ages. I always tell my, my partners and friends that we are living the dark ages of industry. If you look at what's going on now, I see all my competitors, all they do is raise like 100 millions, 50 millions, like give me 100 millions, I can pay my staff for 100 years. It's like, how can you compete with people that cannot lose? How can you compete with people that only aim is get enough capital to drown you and take over? It's the dark age of industry. It happened in the past. The dark age were the middle age. That's what happened. There was countries with no values, only capital and military power. All they do is like siege a fort. They had enough supply to just uh, live for months and years until the people in the fort are like uh, no supply and they can take over their company. Oops, their fort. So is that what we want? Is that what we like? Um, I don't want to be part of that game. I think that the, the dark ages is, is, is not cool enough. So the good news is in history, after the dark ages came the Renaissance. It's some artists, the great Leonardo da Vinci, some thinkers, some believers, some people interested in lifestyle, start to, to think and stop war and start, got interested in lifestyle. They built beautiful forts, beautiful castle, and the lifestyle was introduced for the first time. And this was the most prosperous time in mankind. So who we are? Renaissance 2.0. Okay, so well, hello everyone. Um, I'm Carlos, and maybe you had already received any Dropbox link by me from mail, in the mail. Uh, so I'm the graphic designer, for those who doesn't know. And I'm just going to present a little bit of the lifestyle brand, because as we have such bikes that have such a, a retro style, the people who buy these bikes, at the end they want to like, have all the lifestyle, like all, everything that involves these bikes. So especially for Rebel, what we have is the passion for the leather jackets. That's the style that comes from this. But I'm going to take this out, I think it's going to be easier. So um, maybe you already know we had one leather jacket that was the only one, so it was the leather jacket from Rebel. But right now we're presenting um, two new ones and the one that we had before. But it's been remade. We are working with a better factory that makes uh, like a, such a good leather. This is a huge quality difference from the other one, so this is better. And now we have some more details in the buttons, maybe metal plates and, and everything. You will uh, later see, see them in person. So you can see all the interior, like the tags and everything. It's a, a new resign. It's like a, the 2.0 of the leather jackets. So that's, now, right now it's being called revolutionary because it's the, the, the spirit of Revolt. But then we have uh, the rock, which stands for Revolt Owners Club. So Matt, if you can hold it. That's for the most passionate about Revolt, but they want a different kind of style, like maybe a night ride, maybe they want like a more, let's say, aggressive style. Maybe you have a Torino, you don't want to be like the classic revolutionary, you want to be something more aggressive, this is your line. And also, again, saying all premium details, but more discreet. Like, Rebel logo is just pressed on the... You have to fill the leather after. It's a yeah. ship from New Zealand. It's the best quality leather. <laughs> exactly. So that's the rock, Rebel Owner Club. But then there's the latest one, which is the racer. Maybe for those who love the speed, they want to be like a more, mm, let's say, more like younger style. And they want this. And this is the racer. It totally represents, I think, the, the racer style and the passion for the coffee racer motorcycles, but, well, with our brand, with Rayboot. And again, all the premium details that you will see, the buttons and everything. So after that, we had, okay, that's the Rayboot lifestyle. We also had, you know, the leather uh, helmets. And we're right now presenting a new collaboration with this brand called Marco, which also, uh, this is something that we are still working on it, but we will soon present better. And this is a perfect prototype of the Marco helmets. Then we have the flash disc. I don't know if you already know this, but we have this one. I think also matches the lifestyle of Rebuild. Maybe for coffee, like you saw in the video of Rebuild, or whatever you, you had in mind. But then 
uh, as this is for Raybo, we are also presenting just a little bit of the excited lifestyle. That's a different kind of bikes, that's a different kind of uh, user that's going to use that. So we, we want to offer a different option. Right now we are only presenting two t-shirts, which are this one that Matt's wearing with a simple logo but kind of uh, modern lines. And then a second one, as the bikes are, let's say, less uh, flashy, le less, they have less details, but we're keeping it more discreet, this is our proposal. So these are just a couple of the, of the few projects that we are developing for Rebel Lifestyle, and also wearing that one. And we, we are going to expand this, but keep in mind that there are two different lifestyles, so there are going to be two different line of products. And that's it for me. So we can take thank this you. out. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> what is the future of Revolt? Like, obviously, Carlos shows like some, uh, some apparel. So definitely, we need like a, a really cool apparel line and everything so we can have like a, a real atmosphere. But can we go further? Like, the dream, when I say when I was started the Revolt, the delusion, I was thinking always of a motorcycle, not really a bicycle. Then I took the easy route. But we've always been about motorcycle more than bicycle. So you have the All-Star. You saw it downstairs. It was a bit heavy with the battery to carry up the stairs, so the guys left it. <laughs> but uh, make sure you try it. This one is fully functional. It's a bike that was supposed to be introduced earlier in the market, but we voluntarily uh, paused the project to make sure we can, uh, we can bring the Excite range together. We, have, we had to put priority on Excites and fully develop it. But now that Excite is ready, we're going to introduce uh, the, the All-Star. And for me, the most beautiful one, which is really the, the cruiser of a motorcycle, the rocker. And I think we can bring it here. <laughs> it's a bit big, but. All right. So now that's a baby. <laughs> so this bike will have 28 kilowatt of battery. I don't know if that sounds familiar, but like the biggest battery you have now on a motorcycle is like around 15 kilowatts. Like the, I don't know if I'm allowed to cite brands, but maybe not. But it's like twice the amount of battery from uh, like the closest competitor. And it's, if we look in the e-bike markets, even the, the bike that make this kind of motorcycle, when they went electric, they copy more like a Japanese bike. There's not really like a, a cool bobber electric bike. It was maybe a too scary road to go for like commercially. But for us, like it's, this is where we are at. There's nothing else we can do. So it's basically designed, same as the Cruiser, with the same line, in a really nice low bobber and incredible range. So of course, there's no gas. Those tank just open, so this, you have to pull it manually. But the idea is to have it open just like a Lamborghini door. And inside, you can store two helmets, two like, a, like smaller helmet, a jet helmet, or one full face helmet. You will have also the charge to charge your computer or everything. It will be like a big glove compartment. Future of Excite? Who knows? I don't want an ex-wife, but maybe I can convince her to do something really cool in motorcycle in Excite. We will see. Thank you very much, and I hope we didn't bore you too much. <laughs>